Hi, I'm Todd Summers. I'm from Whitesboro, Texas. And I'm going to talk to you today about how I start and teach the turnaround. Um, this is a three-year-old uh, that I'm going to show this year in the 30s. He's by uh, Inferno out of a Wismare, and uh, his name is Gunna Woe. You know, I don't, I don't start the turnaround too early. Um, I want those horses to get broke. I want them to follow their nose, learn how to, how to follow that nose and, and, and guide before I ever start bridling them up and, and teaching the turnaround. Um, I want them to learn how to follow their nose. Just walk in a circle and follow their nose. Each way. Once they've learned to follow their nose good, then I start teaching them to move their shoulders. I'll walk that circle, I'll take a hold of my inside rein, and I'll put a little inside leg, and I'll push them out of that circle. When they move out, I relax. Go back to that circle. Squeeze with my inside leg, lay the rein across. So, I'm pretty much opening the door. You know, this is, the door is closed here and the pressure is coming from this side and I'm opening it up over here. My outside leg is not doing nothing. My, my outside rein is not doing nothing where they can move out away from the pressure. Horses learn from pressure. They move away from the pressure. In the beginning, you know, on a two-year-old, you're, you're gonna have to kick and kick and kick and say, you know, get over, get over, get over. And when they move over a little bit, relax. And they'll figure out that if they move over, then you're gonna relax. And that's the beginning of teaching that horse how to move their shoulder and the beginning of teaching them how to turn around. Same thing the other way. I'll walk that circle, bending the nose to the inside. When I wanna move over, I squeeze my inside, in inside leg, open the door and move that shoulder out. Once they become more advanced, I can move that shoulder all the way around in a circle. To where they're, that's kind of almost turning because they're crossing over and moving that shoulder. And I want no resistance. I want them to be able to take a hold, move that shoulder. Once they've learned how to move that shoulder good, then you can start teaching them to turn around. If you start teaching them to turn around and they don't know how to move their shoulder, all you're doing is wool wooling them around and pulling them around and trying to, trying to get them to move. You know, If they learn how to move their shoulder, then there's a, a basis to go to a foundation that when they mess up, when they don't want to move that shoulder around and turn around, you can go back to, to encourage them. This is what I'm trying to ask you to do. I'm trying to ask you to move your shoulder. So, in the beginning on a two-year-old, I'll walk that circle and I'll draw that circle down smaller and smaller and smaller till I open my inside leg, lay the outside rein and squeeze with my outside leg and just let them turn. They step two or three times and just walk out of it. You know, I, I don't want them to turn all the way around four or five or six times in the beginning as a two-year-old. I just want them to move that shoulder. So I'll draw, walk the circle draw it down smaller and smaller, then open my inside leg, squeeze the outside leg, and then walk out. They step, 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 walk out. Same way the other way. Walk that circle. If there's any resistance, say they don't want to turn that nose to the inside, make them turn their nose to the inside a little more. And then draw that circle down to you Come in and open your inside leg, squeeze the outside leg, step, 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 walk out. And if they don't, say, you're asking them to turn and they don't want to move that shoulder over. If I'm walking, I'm drawing the circle down and I ask them to turn and they don't want to move, then I'll take my outside rein and squeeze that outside leg and we'll go back to moving that shoulder and just walk in a circle. So they understand that was the foundation that was put on to, to, to do the turnaround. So I'll make them move on that shoulder, move that shoulder. Then I'll walk back into the small, slow circle, 
draw it down smaller and smaller, open the inside leg, squeeze the outside leg, and they'll move. Then from that, you're just building. You're just adding a little more revolutions. You're at, you know, once they get solid with going around three or four times, then you start adding a little speed. Then once you've got them solid, two-handed, doing that, then then you you you, you start you know you want to teach them how to start to turn around from a stop, you know. One, but but I like to keep that forward momentum going for a long time, so they learn to step forward into that. You don't want them sucking back and trying to uh, trying to rock back when you start that turnaround, because then they're going to be on their hind end. And to me the first step in that turnaround is the most important step of the whole of the whole thing if the turnaround starts the first couple steps everything builds from that if it's really correct the first couple steps then you can speed them up and they turn really pretty if they lose their first couple steps and they don't get it right it takes them several revolutions to get that turnaround going and you've already done two or three turns of your four turns and you're gonna end up with minus maneuver. Where if they start out those first couple steps and everything is correct, then you can ask them to speed up, everything flows, it speeds up, the stop's really good, and you'd be in the plus category. One thing, uh, a couple things that I do, um, let me get straight here where you can see me, is when I ask a horse to turn, I open my inside leg. That's like opening the door. It says, this is the direction that we're going to go, okay? I open my inside leg, I lay my rein, and then I squeeze with my outside leg. Some people squeeze with their inside leg, our outside leg, once they start the turnaround, they release it and they just sit there. For me, myself, it works better for me to keep that leg on them, okay? If I want them to turn a little faster, I'll squeeze a little harder. Once they're finished and I want them to really speed up, then I'll cluck to them. If they don't speed up, I'll squeeze harder. If they don't, if they don't speed up, then I'll, then I'll spur them a little bit or bump them with that leg and make them move faster. But for me, if I've got my legs off here and I'm just turning with my legs out, if a horse tries to quit, the first thing that happens is my legs got to come to them. So you'll see those horses start to turn and they start to slow down and the rider kicks. Well, what happens when they kick? Then they jump. Or they, or they, you know, they're trying to quit, then they speed up. Well, if my leg's right there and it's just on, you know, you're not pushing into them, but just on them, if they start to quit, all I gotta do is push my toe down to push my spur into their side, and they'll keep spinning, and they don't get that much slowdown to it to, to where they start back turning again. You know, I can feel that horse when I'm turning. Okay, he's starting to weaken a little bit, I push a little harder, and everything's right there, and I don't have to bring those legs in. It works good for me. Some horses though, you know, they, they want to lay on your legs a little bit too much. You, you have to change your program to fit each horse. You know, some horses I've showed that I have to keep my legs off of them and I cluck to them to turn. If they don't turn faster, you know, I get after them with my leg. But if I keep my leg on them, they'll want to lean against it just a little bit. Well, on the feeler horses, you can keep that leg against them. On the deader horses, you might have to keep your legs off of them. But as a whole, it works best for me to keep that outside leg on while I'm turning. Research shows that over 60% of performance horses experience occasional gastric stress. In a university-led research study, Smart Gut Ultra was shown to maintain stomach health in horses under stress as well as those given GastroGuard for gastric issues. Loved by riders and backed by research, SmartGuard Ultra is the best choice for supporting horses under stress, as well as those with a history of occasional gastric problems. Visit smartpack.com slash SGU research to learn more.